Seattle, Washington, the Washington Athletic Club. My name is Dave Vincent. This is the Players' Championship of the Race for Eight brought to you by Simple Green and the World Players of Handball. We just witnessed Luis Moreno win the Players' Championship after defeating Charlie Shanks in the semifinals. That means he is statistically the race champion. We'll hopefully have him in the booth to do an interview a little later on. He, of course, is still in this pro stop, the Seattle pro stop, which has Nadi Alvarado up against Sean Lenning right here on the show court. Let's go down to Fred Lewis, who is courtside with both players right now. Freddie, time for the announcement here on the show court. Again, we are live from this Washington Athletic Club in beautiful downtown Seattle, Washington. We are ready to start the second semifinal match. I'd like to introduce the players directly to my right. We have the number three seed. His career has spanned three decades in handball. He is a certain first ballot future Hall of Famer. Let's hear it for Nati Alvarado. And on my far right, he's from Shoreline, Washington. He spends his winters in Tucson, Arizona training. He's the number two seed on the Pro Tour, 27 years old. Let's hear it for Sean Lenning. There he is, Sean Lenning, hometown favorite. Back to you, Dave. Thank you very much. Fred Lewis giving the announcements. Sean Lenning representing the Seattle WAC team and Nadia Alvarado representing the, the Tucson Gunslingers, uh, a team that Fred Lewis is actually part of, in a way. I guess he's part of that Tucson group. The Gunslingers have now been eliminated from the Super Bowl competition, Dave, with Charlie Shanks losing that semifinal match. The Gunslingers need to finish 1-2 here to take that Super Bowl title. So now we're down to just two teams, the Seattle Wax and the Idaho Spuds. Both teams with players still alive. Both of these players are all warmed up. We're ready to go, waiting for the referee to call the first server and the score here as Chip Morales gets into the crow's nest all dressed up. Looks like he's about ready to go to church. So now people get mocked for dressing nice. I, I, going to church should not be anything close to a mockery, they mm. think. I just suppose I misinterpreted your tone then. Sorry, I wish I would have said it more clear for you. Mm. This is the semifinals of the bottom bracket. Sean Lenning is the number two seed. He is now statistically out of the hunt for the Players' Championship, but he could win the Seattle Pro Stop. And for him, that's, you know, the best he can do. Come in here and try to win that Pro Stop. Nadia Alvarado is also statistically out as the three seed. He would have had to have seen Luis Moreno lose in the first round, which almost did happen. Sean Linning would have needed Luis Moreno to lose his match that we just saw up against Charlie Shanks, and then Sean would have had to have win, won this tournament in order for Sean to win the Players' Championship. Sean Lenning looks like he's going to get the first serve. Nadia Alvarado will okay, be returning the serve. Sean Lenning serving first. And receiving will be Nadia Alvarado Jr. Looks like you're not the only okay, person luck, who doesn't guys. know how to pronounce Nadi's name. Zero serving zero. A referee also struggling with that, Dave Vincent. And that's an incredible shot from Sean Lenning. Most guys go back there, Dave, just to try and flip that ball back One into play. One serving he zero. that ball off balance with his left hand, hit a winning two-wall pass. That's because he has so much power. Watch what Sean does here. Hold it. That will be played over. Sean's not going to argue because he left that ball up. Normally, he just puts that thing down. One serving zero. Sean's a fan favorite. This is one of those courts that he called home when he first started. In fact, all of the tricks that you've seen Sean do throughout the years came from playing right here against 60 and 70 year olds, he says. Two serving zero. Sean just has so much poise and command in there, Dave. 
Everything just seems to come to him. Well, he knows how to direct traffic. Three mm -hmm. serving zero. It's well put. Especially with those yellow jerseys he's been collecting. Side out. Great shot from Naughty Dave. And I believe Naughty's offensive service return with his right hand has dramatically improved throughout the course of this season. Used to be a liability zero for Naughty. Zero serving three. Would go for a lot on the return of serve with his right hand and not necessarily connect. We'll have to watch for that here today because Sean Lenning's best serve is down the right. If not, he's able to neutralize that with some kill shots. We could see Nadi making a competitive three serving zero match out of this, possibly advancing to the final. Nadi told me this morning, Dave, that he said, you know, he is injured right now. He has a pulled groin, but he's being able to fight through it. And he said the biggest thing for him is that Four he knows he's injured, zero. so he's doing things that he hasn't really done before, using his head more. And he said he's this little upset with himself that at 39 years of age, that he didn't really, you know, use his head for the previous 20 Zero years like he's four. using it now. And he said, I would have won national championships if I were able to, to have played injured in the past. And I think that's one of the things that you and I talked about with Naughty is that he was one of those players that if he didn't feel right physically, he would not enter a tournament. Now he's been entering Four serving zero. and also having success against some of these players, still making it to the semis and finals. Nadi is off Five to just serving a terrible zero. start here, Dave. He's Short. really only hit one good shot thus far in the match. Second serve. And this has been one of those matchups, Dave, this season on the race for eight Pro Tour, where Sean just completely dominating Nadi has not lost to Nadi this season, just as Zero Luis has not five. lost to Sean this season. It's an interesting dynamic in that top three, but yet Nadi, who's number three, has defeated Luis Moreno, while number two, Sean Lenning, has not. So it's it's one serving five. An interesting study there. And the guy that probably could have come in here and made it even more interesting, Alan Garner, just did not have a great season at the race for eight, other than stop seven. Alan Garner could possibly be the most talented of all these players. All these guys are just such great athletes. It's hard to determine just who has the most talent. But right now, the two guys getting two the most out of their five. talents are Sean Lenning and Luis Moreno. They're the guys that have dominated this tour. They've won every stop between the two of them except for one. You see that serve right there? That thing was brutal. Double pound. Unfortunately, pounce. I saw it a lot <laughs> from the server's <laughs> receiving area. Well, if you have serves That's like three that. Three serving five. It doesn't matter where Sean stands. I just don't see how that ball would ever be picked up. Naughty goes right back to it again. Here's his first strike. Sean's so long, he's able to catch those shots right there. I think Naughty Thank broke you. that ball there. No, that's a rounded corner shot. Okay. Like I said, you know, this facility built 1930 has been painted so many times that the corners become somewhat Four rounded, and that's the ball five. slapping that corner. Hmm. Four to five, Naughty. Look at that beautiful serve. It actually picks up speed off the back wall. Great return, though, from Sean. Strange shot there from Naughty. I think he was trying to jack that out mm. into the lobby, Dave. Which we saw happened him do that three yesterday. times yesterday against you. And now Naughty's found some kind of system here tying this game at five. Remember, we only go to 15 here. Sean Lenning is loved at these courts because, of course, he started here as a kid and everyone played against him but and, and grew up watching five him serving five. become a pro player. But they also love Naughty Alvarado up here. He is a fan favorite. He went down and did the shoot around this morning. There's another point, and Sean's going to have to call a timeout here soon. But Naughty did the shoot around with the pro players and the sponsors this morning and the back courts here at the facility. And I heard multiple people come up to me and say it was so great playing Six with Naughty. Serving five. Naughty said, I am so glad I did this. It was one of the funnest times I've ever had. You were down there with Naughty, Dave. What, what was it like, the experience? It was a great atmosphere down there. The people were so appreciative, all the players and the fans so appreciative that the pros came down and played with them, conducted a couple of clinics. It was just a very positive morning yeah. for everyone. I was surprised. Naughty's in the old days, was one of those guys that would refuse to do that because he was in a semifinal of a big match. He, he actually thanked Seven me and said this is five. very important to him, and he felt uh, uh, so much 
you know, passion for those get, that help Pro Handball here at the West. time out, Sean. What looked like here, Dave, a Sean Lenning potential blowout as he led 5-0 in two minutes and 20 seconds into this first game has now completely reversed. Nadia Alvarado scoring eight consecutive points and now is in the driver's seat here in this match in this first game, leading 8-5. Sean Lenning has made four errors here in the last eight rallies. Nadia Alvarado has picked up that amazing serve and he's attacking off the weak return. Now, Sean Lenning has not been pressed here in this tournament and I believe that his stamina on the court is probably not up to where it was in March at the Los Angeles Athletic Club race for eight stop. And Nadi has actually extended him here just a little bit. Dave, and I see him kind of being a little winded. What are your thoughts on that? I didn't have an opportunity to watch Sean Lenning play Luis Cordova yesterday. I was outside the court waiting for the court to open up. But Sean Lenning came out during the timeouts in that match, Dave, and just laid flat on his back. He was breathing really hard. Well, I was, I was thinking, Dave, I couldn't see the match from in that hallway, but I was thinking that it was probably a pretty close match the way Sean was breathing, but in fact it wasn't. So potentially Sean may not be in the, the best physical condition cardiovascularly. And there's another point now, a 9-0 to zero run for Nadia Alvarado, up 9-5 to five against Sean Lenny. And it's not as though... Sean Lenning has not had his chances during this 9-0 run for Nadi. Just has not capitalized. Nadi is really serving well right now, though. Another point for Nadi Alvarado. And Nadi with that open stance, right corner kill. I say right corner, but he hits it into the right corner, but straight down the right wall. 10, serving 5. This is an unbelievable score line here from a guy that's got a, basically a torn groin. Well, I've listened to you evaluate people's injuries, Dave, for a number of years and just doesn't always translate into their play. Well, Nadi's first practice match in two months came last night when he played you hmm. in singles. That's not, you know Nadi. He goes out and five. runs every day and he stays in shape. He has been unable to do anything. I thought Nadi was really sharp yesterday. I thought he moved really well, too, particularly compared to how he moved at the AAC just two months ago when we played. I thought it was a, a, like a different guy in there. And there's another point for Nadi Alvarado now at 12 to 5. Perhaps it, Luis Moreno is onto something preparing for these tournaments by not playing handball. Comes in <laughs> fresh. Yeah, maybe so. 12 serving 5. I know, Dave, you go into seclusion two weeks before an event resting your voice you won't even Eighth. answer your phone that's oh. how you sound 13 serving five oh, so beautiful on the microphone oh here. you're talking about going into the announcing booth okay there's another ace from Nadi Alvarado two in a row now 14 to 5 is the score here and people are just shaking their heads in the gallery here they felt that Nadi was going to lose this one to include yours truly mm. Mr. Seclusion hmm Mr. Pre-game seclusion. Short. I used to hide underneath my bed, but then I gained some weight. Now I can't fit underneath there anymore. Makes it kind of frustrating. Second serve. Might want to go on a diet just so I can properly train for these big matches. I, I really can't believe what I'm seeing here, Dave. And there it is. Nadia uh, Alvarado takes game. game number one. Three minutes, guys. Three minutes. By the score of 15 to 5. 15 to 0 run to Three end minutes. that first game for Nadi Alvarado. That means he scored the last 15 points of the game. And let's take an instant replay of that last point. Nadi Alvarado hitting the wide angle back wall kill off the revolving door. Just an incredible shot. He aimed, Dave, about 10 feet up on that right side wall. Watch this shot here. Just incredible. He hits the side wall up by the foot fault line there. Absolutely the kill shot of the match thus far. That takes a lot of imagination and also precision. As it was Nadi Alvarado hitting three aces in that first game. Only three kills. Sean Lenning making four airs. But just, uh, you know, not every rally is counted on the stat sheet, Dave. Because sometimes there's just sort of those neutral misses where... You might be off balance going for a shot, and it's not necessarily an error, but it's not 
a pass shot or a kill shot either. And we saw Nadi pushing Sean around a lot. And Sean getting his hands on balls and just not able to flip him back to the front wall. See Sean Lenning just jumping back into the court here as he is preparing for this game number two. I think we're all stunned just a little bit by what we just saw. Nadi Alvarado found himself down zero to five to start off this first game and then went out to a 15 to zero run to close out game number one, winning 15 to five versus the hometown favorite Sean Lenning. And some are saying he's the favorite to win this whole tournament even over Luis Moreno, Dave. Well, it's very unusual to see any pro player outscored 15 to zero, particularly a pro player of the stature of Sean Lenning with his firepower, but it just happened. Oh, this is unbelievable. I cannot wait to see the pictures from this, this match with our photographer, our high paid <laughs> photographer, who's gonna capture some great action shots for you and we'll make sure to upload those on to our website and Facebook and all of the social media sites. And Love to see that last shot Nadi Alvarado took where he kills it into the corner, but he goes wide on the kill. And instantly when he hit it, you knew it was going to be good. That's going to look really great on replay. Here it is, that last replay. This is not a terrible return from Sean. He puts Nadi back into that 39 and a half foot range. And I don't think Sean expected Nadi to go for a shot like this. And that actually hitting the sidewall 20 feet from the front wall. And he aimed for that. That's a wide kill from Nadi Alvarado, and that helps him take down game number one. How game two is right here. Look how packed this gallery is, Dave. A lot of congestion out there by the door as the fans are making their way toward the their specified seat. That game took, Dave, just 12 minutes. If you're worried about Nadi Alvarado's conditioning, if you're an Alvarado fan, Dave, it certainly wouldn't have been affected in that first game as he didn't have to do much running, wasn't on the court for more than 13 minutes there in that first game. Nadi Alvarado were able to take down Sean Lenny in this setting, Dave. I, I've become a believer of the Alvarado hmm. training regimen. Well, Nadi said coming into this tournament, there's a terrible miss hit there from Nadi that he wanted to rekindle that Alvarado poise and composure that he felt like he lost a little bit of throughout this race season. I think, Dave, he was referring, and I'm just one serving zero. Here, but I think he was referring to maybe his his sure. on court demeanor. He had a, a couple of spats with with a couple of different players, and, and, and to include you and I here in the broadcast booth. I know Fresno, he was very upset with the choice of ref Two and serving zero. some of the calls. And Atlanta, I know he was upset. And he came right out while we're in the middle of our speech, wrapping up the show and actually kind of barked at us. And that was very unlike Naughty, who usually lets it all, the second he walks off the, the court, you never hear anything zero again serving from him. Two. Well, he developed a rivalry with Luis Moreno. The two really clash when they're on the court. Also had some problems in that. Idaho tournament playing Charlie Shanks and then Luis Moreno. So I think Nadi wants to get himself back into that place where he's just focused only on Two himself and there. Not worry Four. so much about what his opponent's doing or who the referee is, as there's a shot of Second Nadi's serve. beautiful wife, Carrie. Great shot from Sean Lenning, and that could be an example of that groin pull right there is not unable to change direction on a ball that he Three, thought was going to come zero. straight down the right wall and ended up checking up out to his left. Naughty puts a little junk on that return. I don't know how a guy can do that when he hits the ball completely underhand, but you see Naughty and Luis Moreno both doing that a lot. Zero serving three. It's almost like a paddle shot, yet they spin their wrist when they do it. Here's a huge setup for Naughty. He's going to go back to the left side and he's. Trying to blow that ball past Sean Lenny. That's a shot that we've seen Sean Lenning make consistently this season on the Rays for Tour. He misses it there. Gives Nadi a slight opening. One serving three. 
Scores one to three, we play to 15. Big setup for Nadi, and it looked like he was just indecisive there. Wanted to shoot the left corner there, felt Sean Linden coming up on his left, so he changed his mind. Three serving one. And just makes a terrible hand air. And Sean Lenning comes back with a quick ace. Crack serve down the right. Four serving one. And that's that situation that we've seen a lot, Dave, this season where the player hits a revolving door serve and then actually backs up. Four ends up getting one. hit by what would have probably been a kill shot. John Lennon hearing a round of applause here from the crowd. Carrie Alvarado, who is very nervous when she watches her husband play. She's very quiet. She's sitting up there studying what's going on here. Let's take an instant replay of that very last shot. I believe Nadi went down there, Dave, knowing he had no chance to get that ball, but just went down because he'd have to then wipe the floor after he went down. I don't know hmm. about that. You don't? Sounds okay. like you're trying to accuse Nadi of something I'm not accusing. Here. I'm saying maybe he was looking for a little Five break in the momentum one. here. Let's just watch the end of this rally. Let's no. watch this here. Now, does Nadi really have to go down there, Dave, when well, the ball's yeah, three feet away from him? Absolutely. I hmm. believe that Nadi believes that ball's going to check into that right wall. And, and you saw Sean put a wicked reverse on that ball, which kept it on the ground out. Sean normally has this amazing shot that'll actually hit the ground and pop back one into the wall. Five. I think Nadi was thinking he was going to do that. Hmm. Said Sean slid it down. I mean, Nadi's a smart guy, but I don't think he's so smart to go down on purpose. And now Nadi Alvarado finds himself down six to one here against Sean Lennox as he wipes his goggles clear. Sean feeling pretty confident. Five serving one. That ball fooled Nadi. And now it's Nadi completely out of sorts here. Uh, Nadi not happy with the fact that he made contact with Sean as he went around the revolving door, and that's why he's stalling just a little bit with his goggles. Six serving one. Sean's really starting to hit the ball well now, Dave. You can hear the difference in the sound. Takes a little bit off of that ball to ride the right side wall. Very smart shot. Nadi looks all out of sorts right now. Seven serving one. It's a great camera shot Short. right there. Capturing the Washington Athletic Club logo in the background. Second serve. I don't believe, Dave, that Nadi Alvarado has beat Sean Lenning in over five years. Now, I could be mistaken Eight, there, Dave, one. but I don't remember any match that he's defeated Sean Lenning. Well, I thought that he took down Sean Lenning at a, an event you and I went to in Anchorage, Alaska in 2008. Dave Chapman took down Luis Moreno in the semis. It was Nadi who took down Sean Lenning in the semis. Seconds. Nadi took down Dave Chapman in the finals. That was Anchorage, I believe, March of 2008. Hmm. How does that feel? Feels pretty good, actually. I'm, I'm happy that, that you did remind me of that. That was 2008. I said it's been about five years, so that was a little over four years ago. So, yeah, it's right in that ballpark, but I did not remember that match. Does that actually count on the official records? I know that... You keep them. That was officially an exhibition tournament. Didn't count towards the rankings. So I, I, I don't know if we can say that It was the more. Alaskan shootout, and it was a ranking tournament. It actually was not. Yes, it was. Hmm. Sorry, we had John Bike and Dan Armijo. And it was an invitational. And you were there as well. It was not a ranking well, tournament. Well, we didn't invite Dan Armijo, but he showed up. So. <laughs> and there's another point for I Sean Lenny. good. He's one distance agree. Point. Now, Nadi concerning himself with the line judges here. Referee should have pointed that out before this whole thing started. That ball was short by three inches. Let's look at that again if we can go back to the booth brought to you by Simple Green. 11 serving one. Score is 11 to one. Well, it was clearly short. I don't think we need to see it again. Well, you didn't reply to that. No, I knew it was short. That was a point for Sean Linney on a ball that was three inches short. Hold it. And I can see why Nadi like wanted to three. see who the line judges were. 11 1 again. Hold it. Now, as a handball player here, Dave, if you know a ball is short and the line judges overrule it,
do you step in and say as the server, I saw that short and make it a gentleman's game, or short. you just say, I'm just going to let the line judges figure this out? I saw it short. I think if you're 100% sure that it was short, you would just Both agree. concede that it was Second short. Serve. I think you, the if worst you think there was point. a 1% chance it was good, though, and both the linesman and the referee agree that it was good. Oh. Now, this is going to hurt. There might be some blood involved on in this. And there is. I was actually going to say that... Was that an avoidable hinder? It, it was an avoidable hinder. Naughty didn't get out of the way. It was an avoidable hinder, not called by the referee. Sean took the shot anyway, and now there's blood all over the court right here. Show court... Uh, you know, Sean probably feels bad about this, but it if was an avoidable hinder. If you're queasy here, don't look. That he actually broke Naughty's goggles there also. Well, he might have broke Naughty's nose, and I'm not joking about that. Let's look at that replay one more time. We're going to have to get somebody down on the show court here to clean up the blood that's now being, that's drizzled across the floor. Now, it's in slow motion. And this is where I believe it's an avoidable. Now, you know, Naughty does not try to get out of the way at all. He just stands at once. In fact, he comes back into the play. Oh, I think it's a clear avoidable. And look at how close. And Sean, did Sean hit that with a fist? So that was a punch directly to the nose then. And you see Sean tried to hold up his swing, but Naughty was literally right there at the contact point. If you're queasy, you might not want to watch this. Even cleaning it up is a little disgusting. Sean Lenny cleaning up this mess here. And I wonder if Naughty Alvarado's wife, Carrie, has made her way down to the court. And there's the goggles made by I'd like to see Oakley. some disinfectant spread across this floor, Dave. Now that we've had some blood on the court, there will be some other players sharing this ring. I know our sideline reporter, Ashley Moeller, is trying to get a scoop here with her microphone to talk to Sean Lenning or, or the handball president. We see Darren down there. I know Ashley's working her way down there to get a conversation with Brian Henson or Darren. You see they have the disinfectant, like you said. This is a very interesting turn of events here. Nadia Alvarado won the first game defeating Sean Lenning 15-5, to five, and it's been all Sean Lenning since that point here in the second game. And if you're wondering what's going on, this is the athletic director here, the Washington Athletic Club, we're zooming in with Nadia Alvarado hitting this ball here. He actually leans back into Sean. That's where I think the avoidable is right there. He gets out of the way, but not by much, and he takes one directly to the face. And that's why I said I believe there's going to be some blood here, and it happened instantly. And Sean comes over, and he comforts Nadia, and Nadia grabs Sean's left arm here and Sean's basically waving people in and, and saying that he's sorry here. Now, Dave, we know how painful that must be for Nadia Alvarado, how hard it might be for him to continue, but Sean's a very sensitive guy. How will he come back from this after literally breaking his opponent's nose? What really frustrates me is that's normally the question I say to you, mm. and then you would reply with good, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to reply and say that's a very good point to you because Sean is a very sensitive guy, and I think it's his, it's his sensitivity in, in a positive way. He really, truly does care for people, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe this is going to be a very difficult thing for Sean to come through. Sean's asking the referee if it's 15 or 20 minutes. It's a 15-minute break. You have up to 15 minutes. Right. But Sean I can't really feel all that badly because he didn't do anything wrong there. I mean, all he did was hit the shot. was an avoidable hinder. Obviously, he still feel badly, but... I really like the Washington Athletic Club crew, the staff, the athletic director down there disinfecting the floor immediately after what appears to be a potential broken nose or some type of laceration to the face of Nadia Alvarado. He has a... Uh, some type of contusion, and we don't know exactly what it is because we're unable to see it here directly, but I think when that nose piece of his eye guards gets popped out, it sometimes can it can create a, a cut on the face. We saw his nose was bleeding, and that very well could have been just a direct punch right to the nose as well. well I think it was it's definitely a nosebleed. I don't think this is a cut on the face of any kind. Here's the replay on camera. And the point of impact right there, that looks brutal. That could actually hurt Sean because that's the shoulder that Sean's had troubles with. Let's go back again one more time if we can back in the director's booth. 
and take a look at this replay. They're also watching the replay in the gallery right now as we zoom in here, brought to you by Owen Gloves. See how Naughty comes back in? We felt that was an avoidable hinder. Here's where Sean pops him right square in the face. Sean reaches over and consults Naughty. Naughty grabs his wrist, and you know Naughty's in some severe pain at this moment. Sean looks back toward the door, and Naughty Alvarado now taking this extended timeout. His wife, Carrie Alvarado, is down courtside as well. Dave, we're joined right now by Hall of Famer and WPH President Fred Lewis. He actually had a similar incident happen to him in a pro event. Fred, I think you were telling me that Vern actually hit you in a similar way during a match. Well, it was partially my fault. He had a setup to the right side. And, uh, you know, I tried to cut in in front of him to go for the corner, and he changed his shot up at the last second and came back towards the left side and, uh, you know, hit me at that time. I was wearing glasses and ended up having to get stitched up. Uh, came back and won the match, though, mm. and that's all that counts, right? Right. So, Fred, having mm -hmm. seen this replay and now watching it right here in super slow motion, is that an avoidable hinder on Nadia Alvarado? Well, I thought so because it looked, he could have given ground right there. In other words, he should have moved up or forward, but then again, he may not have thought that Sean was going to take the shot because Sean was behind him. Yeah, but... So it's kind of hard to say. But the thing is, Sean hit him with his follow through. Let's, let's, everybody's looking but let's take one more look at that avoidable. I think there was an avoidable before Sean even swung. Watch well, how Nadia makes no attempt to... He actually moves back into the way. Now, right here, Nadia should be moving to his left. See how Nadia stays... Instead, now he moves back to his right and holds well, his exactly. ground. Well, exactly. That's why I said he should have moved up. You know, and he had time to move forward instead of backing up. Right now we're in the middle of an extended player's injury timeout. Kind of a sensitive moment here in the Washington Athletic Club. We want to thank Fred Lewis for sharing that insight with us. Fred saying that he did come back and win that match. I'd be interested to hear if Fred actually was able to get stitched up within that 15-minute time limit. It seems like sometimes getting stitches might take more than 15 well, they, minutes. Well, right? they, they put a butterfly on it to stop the bleeding, and then afterwards I went to the emergency room. They put some stitches in. I wasn't going to forfeit. Now, we, we talked a little bit about how sensitive Sean is in a good way because he cares about people. Having known Sean the way you do, how do you think this is going to affect his play coming back in here because you sort of have that tendency to, to feel badly, and if he does, the level of play could significantly drop. Well, it could, but, uh, you know, Sean knows what the stakes are, and, uh, you know, especially after the way uh, Nadi came back and won that first game by scoring 15 in a row, and now Sean is on a roll, and I think he wants to keep the momentum going. I don't see him letting up. If he does, then uh, I'll be very, very surprised. Hey, Fred. Ashley Moeller, our sideline reporter, went down and spoke to both Sean Lenning and Nadia Alvarado. We have Ashley Moeller somewhere in this facility. Let's go to her now and ask her what transpired downstairs and, and what happened and what were the thoughts, Ashley? Well, I walked downstairs and there were bloody towels everywhere, which is kind of gruesome. And um, Carrie was at Nadia's side and she thinks it's broken, but Nadia didn't think, seem to think it was broken. Um, they're looking for some cotton to shove up there so he can get back in the game. And then Sean came out of the court, and what he said to me was, well, that's what happens when you back into your players. Yeah, well, that is true. Uh, unfortunately, when you back into your players, you sometimes end up getting a broken nose because of it, and uh, even avoidable hinder. I believe the referee, as he made his way back into our booth, he also said to us, this, uh, that's an avoidable hinder, isn't it? I mean, uh, that's kind of the discussion. I don't think it's a little obvious that Naughty backed into him, but also... It says in the rule book that if you hit somebody with your follow through, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an avoidable hinder, especially something like that where you're so close to somebody. You have to protect Sean Lenning as well. He could be injured with that contact. So I believe there will be a point called. I believe this brings up another situation, Dave. I think the referee should be able to review a hinder call when the point is over. So if you've hit a kill shot and he calls a hinder, the point was over, he can go back and look at that and decide whether that was the right call. Well, I think the referee's looking at it right now as we're playing this live 
broadcast. And I mean, I know that's the last of the concern of Sean Lennon and Nadi. They both would, of course, take back that last shot if they had the chance or give up avoidables not to have it happen. I know Sean, being a sensitive guy, really does care about these guys. And, and you know, of course, Nadi Alvarado does not want to go home with a broken nose. So we'll see how he reacts here. I don't know what minute we're at right now, but as I look back, I know this happened about 25 minutes after the hour. We're at the 11 minute mark right now of this injury timeout, which means that Nadi has about four more minutes of this injury timeout before I believe he will have to start taking timeouts if he wants extended time. They're looking for some gauze to put up into Nadi's nose to stop the bleeding. I don't know how a player could play under those circumstances. You have to breathe through your mouth and nose mm -hmm. when you're, it seems to me, in, in a position like this against a top level player like Sean Lenny. Fred, what are your thoughts about somebody that's able to actually go in there and play with gauze in their nostrils? Well, he still has one nostril, and he still has, he can breathe through his mouth. So, you know, unless it happens to you, it's hard to say what effect it's going to have. I mean, uh, knowing Nadi, he'll be back in, and he'll get his intensity going again, and uh, we'll see what happens because uh, even if he loses this game, you know, he still has time to compose himself, come back, and play an 11-point tiebreaker. So there's still plenty of uh, plenty of. Uh, match left in Naughty for sure. You're watching the WPH Simple Green Race for Eight Players Championship here in the Washington Athletic Club, Seattle, Washington. Show court here, Sean Lenning versus Nadia Alvarado. Earlier it was Luis Moreno defeating Charlie Shanks. Here's the replay of why we're sitting here waiting for the players to get back on the court. A replay that caused Nadia Alvarado to potentially break his nose. He got a smash right to the face from Sean Lenning. It was incidental. Sean Lenning went for his shot. You can see halfway through that shot, though, Fred, and also Dave, you can see Sean was somewhat letting up right about the moment of impact. This could have been a lot worse than what happened here. If Sean would have taken that full roundhouse fist shot, shot to the face, I believe Sean's actually starting out with a fist, and he decides to go with an open hand at the very end as he slows down his swing. And you'll see here, Sean is going to, I think, get a fist this ball. We could see Nadia Alvarado Jr. in the future donning a Bill Lambeer mask to protect that broken I, nose. I, I, don't, I don't think he was going to fist that. I think he saw the opening down the right, and, you know, he just wanted to push the ball down the right because, uh, you know, Nadi was pinned, almost pinned against the, the left side wall. So, See, Nadi, he was standing there, and then he came back into the view, and it's unfortunate for him. That's why we're in this extended time out. You're watching the WPH Simple Green race for eighth, seventh place finals coming up at 4 o'clock this afternoon. It's 3.38, of course. That's pending the outcome of the further delays that we're getting here on the show court due to that injury. Andy Nett versus Luis Cordova at 7 o'clock, uh, excuse me, at 4 o'clock, 4 seventh. That's going to be a fun match to participate in. Dave, you're up against Alan Garner in uh, for the fifth place finals. And I know you're really, really excited to actually play Alan in this in this round. And then third place will be Charlie Shanks versus the loser of this one. Very well could be Nadia Alvarado if he does not recover here. That would be another fun match at 6.45 p.m. First will be the finals of this Seattle Pro Stop. There's two things happening here, Fred Lewis. There's a Pro Stop, the race for eight stop number eight with Seattle, Washington. And we also have the Players' Championship. Now that Players' Championship was awarded earlier after that win that Luis Moreno got in the semifinal versus Charlie Shanks. He was awarded a yellow jersey for that. And Ashley Moeller, our sideline reporter, who's within earshot of us, uh, said that she saw Luis Moreno get a little emotional there with a couple tears going down his face. And we don't see Luis uh, get into that state very often because he is so smooth, Fred. Well, <clears throat> without revealing too much, you know, Luis is, uh, has gone through... Uh, a lot personally in the last uh, couple years or so. And, um, you know, he's fought through this. It, 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 to me, it's remarkable that, you know, he's been able to focus and concentrate and, uh, and play handball the way he has. But uh, I think maybe he just he uses handball, you know, as a way to, uh, to deal with uh, a very tough personal situation right now. And, uh, I think that's the reason why he, he got emotional, because uh, 
you know, he's having great success in handball, you know, in this part of his life. And uh, hopefully, you know, things will continue for him because, uh, you know, he's a great kid, great human being. And, of course, you know, he's just a great handball player, a great representative for the sport of handball. He truly is a, a great credit to this game, Fred. He's always a gentleman, and he always puts on a great show. And he's established himself as the best player on the Race for Eight Tour this season. I believe win or lose in the finals tonight. Sean Lennon's back in the court here warming up. Fans here are sticking around courtside because they want to see the conclusion of this match. Sean Lennon, I believe, thinks that Nadia Alvarado will be back, so he's back warming up here on this show court. Coming up after this one, it'll be Andy Nett versus Luis Cordova at 4 o'clock. I believe, Dave, that we've exceeded the 15 minutes at this point. I saw John Bike on the phone. I would assume that he is speaking to possibly an Adi Alvarado Sr. would be my guest, Dave. And, uh, you know, Nadi may lean on his dad here for advice. You know, do I go back in here and play? Is this worth it for me to go back in here and play with potentially a broken nose? I can't really breathe. You know, I have this gauze potentially in my nose. Or does he just say, you know what, I just am unfit to play at this point? So Nadi may be going through that kind of decision-making process, can he be effective enough in there, Dave, to actually be competitive? Well, if he, no matter what happens, I pretty much can see Nadia Alvarado coming back on the court and probably waving to the fans if he was to say goodbye. And if he does come back onto the court uh, to warm up again, I could see Nadia Alvarado getting a round of applause from this very educated group that's here courtside that's now sticking around waiting for the conclusion of what is going to take place here in this semifinals match. We don't really quite know what's going to go on. We're waiting for some kind of sound from Ashley Muller, our sideline reporter who could at any time just break in with her microphone and give us an update of what she's witnessing downstairs. This is when we need our handball blooper reel. When you, like in a baseball game, when you have the rain delays and you've got people dropping fly balls and sliding headfirst on the tarp in the rain. It's all, it's all in good fun, but we'd be watching some of the great shenanigans of the Race Freight Pro Tour right now. But instead, <laughs> it's just you and I bantering. Here's a replay. Would like to cue up some of those interviews, though, Dave, from yesterday. I know Sean Lenning was interviewed. We haven't had an opportunity to see any of those. Perhaps, Dave, we could hear what motivates Sean Lenning to play handball. Maybe even Nadia Alvarado, what makes them love this game so much. This would be the time to do it. Maybe, Dave, we could even hear from the executive director. I know that you had some thoughts on this, this tour and the WPH and its mission. Well, let's tell our producer, Chris Garad, to queue up number three hmm. of that Sean Linning interview. And let's, let's look and see, you know, why Sean Linning loves the game of handball. Handball, because there's just so many different things to do. And in, in the space that you're given, it's just, uh, you know, never gets boring, I guess. There's always room for improvement and uh, creativity and things like that. So it's not quite as straightforward as some other sports, I guess. Well, I, I kind of like that uh, response from Sean. He said there's so much to do in the space that you're given. There's 800 square feet of space in there, and he finds creativity is what kind of drives him. We're going to take a quick time out here in the booth. We'll be back in just a bit. Stick around for the conclusion of this second game at racefor8.com. What if a disaster strikes without warning? What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but... 
Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed today. Learn how at ready.gov. Up, college is hard. Down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up here. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour there, dark to show them that higher education means a brighter future. <laughs> My name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? My name is Bruce Fabrizio. In 1975 I invented Simple Green based on three principles. It had to be safer to use, it had to work, and it had to be completely made in America. From generation to generation, Simple Green has been cleaning everything from car engines and tools to kitchen counters and floors. No matter what you clean, indoors or outdoors, clean it with non-toxic, biodegradable Simple Green. And we are back as Nadia Alvarado is stepping back onto the court here after getting hit in the face from Sean Lenning. Both players agree to continue playing, and that's why we heard a round of applause from the crowd. I don't know if you did, Dave, but it certainly was kind of rumbling from the location that we're at here at the Washington Athletic Club. Nadia Alvarado still holding his nose. The big thing is he's trying to stop his nose from bleeding. Even though he's at that 15-minute injury timeout mark, we're kind of in this gray area of the rule book where Nadi says he was ready to play 10 minutes ago, but the blood is not ready to play as it keeps pouring down his nose. So it's very, it's, there's a good chance Nadi has a broken nose. Well, Nadi can buy himself, Dave, about an extra six or seven minutes going into the tiebreaker by just sort of going through the motions for the remainder of this game and then taking that extra three minutes in between games. Actually has a Band-Aid on his nose, on the outer part of his nose, and that's what I said that. Give a round of applause for Nadi returning. Well, the crowd is getting into it here, giving a round of okay. applause to Nadi Alvarado. We'll see how Sean Lenny approaches this Score day. is 12, serving one. I think Sean Lenny will take care of business here. Put an end to this second 13, game. serving one. And sure. who knows what we'll see, Dave, in that tiebreaker. We don't know which Nani Alvarado is going to show up. Well, we know which Nani Alvarado is going to show up for the, tie for the second game here after that. 14, serving one. Return of serve. Nani Alvarado is doing exactly what you said. He just wants this to get over Three with Three minutes, guys. Three there minutes. There it is. We had a 17 minute timeout followed by 45 seconds of play and now we're going to have a three minute break and that's probably a smart move. Nani Alvarado will be back in three minutes to close out this, this match versus Sean Lenning and game number three. Let's look at that replay really quickly, Dave, one more time. It's a replay where Sean Lenning is going to go for a shot and Nadia Alvarado slips back in front of him and then comes back to the left again. Sean is going to try to drive this down the right wall, inside out swing, and that pops Nadia on the, on the nose. Now he's wearing a bandage on the outside of his nose, which means that maybe he's even cut from his own eye guards. But uh, nonetheless, there was an injury timeout followed by just about 45 seconds worth of play there. And we got the stats from John Bike. He gave us the ace serves, the winners, the kills, and the broken noses on mm. the stats. So Naughty's got one hash mark on the broken nose. So Naughty had more broken noses then. I'm surprised. <laughs> yes, he did. We're going to uh. take a quick break. We'll be back in uh, 60 seconds. You stick around here at RaceForEight.com. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Science, extreme science for your active lifestyle. We are different. Society should aspire to be more like us. Be part of the first class. Get energized. Get outside. Hold on, guys. It's going to get bumpy. And get moving. Experience the power of physical activity. <laughs> Join the movement at ActionHeroAlliance.com. 
So, what's it gonna be? Uh, we could ride bikes. Skating. Movies. Zoo. Whatever you guys want to do. Can we just do this? Yeah. We could just do this. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. And we are back live here at the Washington Athletic Club as Sean Lenning goes into this tiebreaker. After losing the first one 15 to 5, Nadia Abrado then gets hit in the face by Sean Lenning at 13 to 1. And Sean was just in complete control of that match. Nadia did not lose that second game there because of the, the broken nose to the face. Instead, he actually lost because Sean was just on fire in that second. Now we're going to go into a breaker played to 11 points. You talk about Nadia Alvarado Jr., Dave, in the past, not willing to play with injuries. He's now in there with a pulled groin and a broken nose. So not only playing with an injury, but playing with multiple severe injuries. Well, I can guarantee you Nadia doesn't feel that pulled groin right now. I thought, it was I thought the ball was short. I agree with you, Dave. Cannot hear the referee, though. Point stands. One serving zero. We're going to 11. Sean has the first point. One to zero. We'll see what kind of mindset Naughty has, because I believe Naughty would have argued that call a little bit more, Dave, if he was really Two serving zero. feeling like he was in a position to win this match. <laughs> Naughty likes to play close. Play it again. And you can see it right there. That ball just slid down and I don't right agree there. with that call there. He was right there. Two serving zero. Oh, I like that shot, but not he misses it. He had the wrong spin, Dave. He went over to the top into the sidewall. If he goes over the top toward the front wall, he makes that. It was actually Three the right shot, zero. but he didn't get his legs into that shot, and that's why it hit the corner and died. You have to get your lower body into that shot in order for the ball to hit the corner and jump towards the front wall. And right now, Dave Nadi looks just completely out of sorts. I don't blame him. But he looked out of sorts before the injury, and Nadi goes down to one knee, gets that ball back, he's still back Hold in the it. play, and there's some contact. Well, Mayweather did fight the last seven rounds of his fight with Cotto with a broken nose. He was getting down, punched Nadi. in the nose for seven rounds. I'm not sure if those guys really feel it, though. It looks wet uh, right on the short mm. service line. I think adrenaline's yeah, so high right at some there. points there with the boxers that they're not feeling a lot of their injuries until after it's all over with. Mm. Nadia Alvarado was pretty active in that last rally, going down on one knee, getting back up, hopping around in the court. But I see a lot of hesitancy in Nadia Alvarado in his swings right now, just is not really trusting his movement or his condition right now. Not conditioning, but his actual condition, Dave, with this nose injury. And Dave, as you know, if your concentration's altered even 5%. Three serving zero. You're a different player in there. Short. Oh, you can feel that, that nose throb. Second. Even if you're taking a back wall shot, it hurts. Hmm. You have to really rise above all of that. And that ball hit one of those corners. I believe it broke. Well, this is the second broken thing on this court. But you said the corners weren't broken, they're just rounded. No, well, he broke Naughty's nose earlier, and now he <laughs> broke the ball <laughs> here in the second game. We have a DJ here who put a little Kansas on during this broken ball warm-up. You're just so proud that that's the first song you've known in the whole weekend. Had to point it out. Well, I am pretty proud of that, but frankly, you know, we're... Having a good time here at the Washington mm. Athletic Club. I know you are too, Dave Fink. It's absolutely an incredible tournament. I mean, we've been fortunate, Dave, to have been to eight cities, and you hate to compare any of them because they've all been so hospitable to us and so happy to have us there. But the Washington Athletic Club and Brian Henson and all of the staff here and the volunteers have just made this tournament so special for the players, not only with the introductions, Short. the court, and just the way that we've been treated and appreciated Second here, serve. Dave, has been really overwhelming. Uh, there's another point now for Sean Lenning. 
Now at four to one. Four serving zero. Sorry, four to zero. Naughty hasn't scored yet since getting his nose popped. And if this match were to end with a Sean Lenning victory, which it seems like Reagan, it will it. right now, the higher seed would have won every match in this event thus far, with the exception of Four Charlie Shanks zero. taking out Alan Garner. And those guys, they were so close in the rankings that they're almost tied for number four. So really not even an upset at that point. Sean Lenny makes a little error in the front court. He had a nice front kill, and he dipped it in just slightly. Now zero, zero to four. four. Naughty was really hot at the end of game number one with three straight aces. But we haven't seen that serve yet, and there it is. He finally gets it. Sean... <laughs> Can't get that ball. One serving four. As it just seems to be about less than an inch off the ground at contact. Short. Sean's got a really good return of serve. Second serve. Long arms and he uses his wrist and flips it up toward the front wall and it usually becomes a high two wall shot. He uses that shot very well in three wall and he brings it to the four wall court as well. Yeah, I'm going to call that over. Ooh, that's tough. I Nadi's not going to like this. Off the back wall, that's why. Nadi is saving all of his energy for the actual points. Again. He's not even addressing the referee. I believe two calls have gone against him here in this tiebreaker. Short. He's narrowly even looked at the referee. I thought the first serve of this tiebreaker was clearly short, Dave, and he didn't complain. And that ball just looked Second like serve. it slid right down the wall away from Sean Lennon. There can still be contact and, and not have contact calls. I didn't like how, uh, how Chip says to Sean, you know, did, did you touch Four him? Did you guys touch him? I, mean, I don't like that question being asked. If you touch somebody, Short. it doesn't need to be replayed. It's not necessary. Second we serve. know here in the Pro Tour that there's contact on huge back wall setups, and the Check referees it. have been trained not to call those because it actually punishes the wrong person. But then while we're talking about that Four and how one. possibly... Referee is sliding Nadia Alvarado. He then double faults on his serve, and that's why Sean's in the box right now. I still think Nadia has a chance here, Dave. And the crowd just loves Sean Lenny. But they also really adore Nadia Alvarado Jr. He's been a champion One up here at this four. Washington Athletic Club. Nadia gets a point. Short. That's Nadia's second serve third short ball out of five attempts. Including a double fault, Dave, in his last service inning. Naughty lost in the semifinals here of the prime time in Seattle Pro Stop in 2008. That was his last match here on this court leading into this tournament. This is also the semifinals here. Two serving four. Well, his semifinal loss was against the very sure. best Emmett Pichot I've ever seen. That was a match that you can find on demand Second somewhere serve. on our website. In it's actually on page 32 okay. on Vimeo. And Sean Lenin got defeated by Emmett Pichot in the finals of that tournament. That was a fun one, actually. That Very was competitive. back when you and I were close to being friends. Boy, how a lot of Three has serving since. four. Three to four, Nadi Alvarado. <laughs> Good serve right there. He pins Sean to the left, but then misses his shot. Really sloppy play right now from Sean Lenning. It just seems like he lost his concentration a little bit, and that can happen, Dave. You're playing against somebody that is not playing, and then all of a sudden they turn it up. Four serving four. And you're a little bit disconcerted. Well, you saw that from Nadia Alvarado. In L.A., and here's Naughty. He has a big opening, and he hits it right back at himself. And Sign Naughty out. trying to walk his way into a hinder call by walking back into that server's box, but would have gotten it if it was game four. Four serving four. But doesn't get it here at 4-4 four, four in the tiebreaker. Oh, he, Naughty missed a left-handed shot up there in the front court. He decides to power it, and he gets a point off an ace. Now Sean at 5-4. Five five this has been one short. of the strangest matches we've ever seen, Dave. Referee called a short ball here. Oh, I thought that was well over the line. Well, I did too, and the crowd was cheering, so that makes me wonder what was going on there. Six serving four. Oh, no, nope. now it's six to four. Short. And now here's a short ball being called from the referee. Six to four is the score. Second. 
strange. The referee actually said short, Dave, and Sean pumps that ball to the front. Nadi goes down in the corner and gets the side out. Great shot there from Nadi Alvarado. Four serving six. At this next time out, I believe Ashley Moeller is going to have a quick interview with Carrie Alvarado as she is getting all tuned up to talk to Nadi's wife at the next timeout, if there is a timeout here. There might not be one called. I'm kind of surprised. Second Nottie serve. Took a lot of time during that injury timeout, but now he's not utilizing a couple more minutes that he has. But well, Dave, I think Nadi's just trying to keep that adrenaline flowing right now. If he calls a timeout, he's going to start thinking about that nose injury a little bit more. Six, right now he's four. just trying to get himself in that mindset of just Short. being in the moment. The more... Second. Zoned in, he can get on this match, Dave, the less that nose is going to hurt, I believe. I couldn't tell from here. Nadi's fault. I'm letting him that was that Sean Lenning lobbying for a screen. I couldn't, t I can't tell from No, right actually, here. Nadi hit a shot that hit Sean Lenning in the leg. I'm and Sean didn't, Sean didn't think it was going to make Six it. Six serving four. It, the sound off Nadi's hand. Short. Yeah, that ball wouldn't have made it. I called it short. Both one agrees. Maybe that's a little one agrees. Payback for a couple of the miss calls that mm. the referee had Six. <laughs> starting off this match. Six serving four. Second serve. See how Sean jumps right back toward the middle after that serve. Nadi hits it right in the spot where Sean's not standing, but Sean jumps Six, right seven, into four. the spot. With Sean standing there, where can Nadi really hit that return other than the left corner? That's not what Nadi wanted to do. Sean's so deadly from there. Nadi's able to pick it up. Sean dives in. Nadi's in control, and then he hits it in the ground. That would have been a side out, and the crowd recognizes it. I see fist pumps out here. That was actually the worst swing I've ever seen Nadi Alvarado make. Seven, Did seven, not four. have that fluidity to it. That was a very easy shot for Nadi. And he comes back with an off-balance 35-foot return of serve rollout right in front of Sean Lennon. Go figure, Dave. That's just how this game works sometimes. Four serving seven. Score is four to seven. Beautiful shot from Sean. We haven't used, seen Sean using the corners all that much today, Dave, but picked the perfect time for it right there. Seven, serving four. Score is seven to four. I want to say hello to Hold it. Harry Fitzgerald. You might remember him, Simon's son from Australia, mm. living in Melbourne, watching the live broadcast right now. And Harry wants to say hello to you and yours truly. Seven, serving four in Melbourne with a picture sure. text that we received at WPH Cell Phone Central here. I believe Harry was only about Second four or serve. five months old when I met him. Oh, but you make an impression that lasts a lifetime, Dave. Mm. Harry knows you in voice and as a Elite Eight member. Seven serving four. Short. You have to hand it to Nadi Alvarado. He's fighting through this. Second serve. I'm surprised he has four points on the scoreboard. Amazing reverse there from Sean. Just an unreturnable ace. Eight serving four. Short. Sean's hit a lot of short serves here in this tiebreaker. Sean's second been serve. hitting this two all serve on the second serve and then backing right into Nadi Alvarado's shot. That time Nadi had a clean shot at the front wall. Beautiful shoulder height kill, Dave, from 38 feet. Sean Lenning feeling it now. Uh, time out. two One points minute. from the finals. And it would only be fitting, Dave, that. Sean Lenning challenges Luis Moreno, the two guys that have completely dominated this 
Race for eight Pro Tour season. I know that Ashley Moeller is looking for Carrie Alvarado right now so she can ask the wife of Naughty how he is feeling. I think she's around here somewhere and I know that Ashley was informed that during the first time out to go find her. In the meantime, let's cue up number four on the Sean Lenning interview. We had earlier today sat down with Sean and asked him about the sacrifices that he makes in order to come out here and perform at this high level. And this is what Sean Lenning had to say. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd be happy if I was a B player, I think. I mean, it is kind of, yeah, it's an honor to be invited for sure. But I, you know, I don't try not to define myself as a handball player. Like, I don't know, there's, I'm more than that, really. I mean, it's, it's cool and everything. I liked it when I was a C player playing with uh, the old guys at my old club. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm happy. It, it doesn't matter. Okay. That's a great little cut in right there from Sean Lenning. Second I mean, those serve. are hard questions to answer. You know, what motivates you? Uh, why do you play? Where do you get the love? All that stuff. It's, you know, these are things that you probably have never really understood why you loved the sport or ever even try to quantify and all of a sudden you Four have a microphone and nine. a camera stuck to your face. Four to nine is a score here. It's sometimes difficult because these players have to actually think about what is it that I like about this? We don't ask softball questions here at the WPH. Well, we've asked questions with Sean Lenning in the past and he has got into tears a few times or a little emotional with some of his answers. Those interviews at the New York Athletic Club that you conducted I felt were very intriguing because I think that you were peeling Five, Sean's nine. onion just a little bit. Mm. Five serves nine and Sean was lobbying short. for a screen call and this is going to be appealed short. but not overturned. Both agree. Second I agreed serve. with that non-screen call. Sean Lenning was in the back court coming. Short again. Running Another. in. That's the second double fault from Nadia Alvarado in this tiebreaker, Dave. Very difficult to win a tiebreaker when you've double faulted twice to your Nine opponents. Nine serving five. Zero double faults. That's where Nadi is really potent right there. He goes over the top of that ball and reverses it down that wall, which means normally it would check up. This time it slides. Five serving nine. This is not over with for Nadi Alvarado, Dave. Short. I agree. He has to get over these short serves, though, because... Particularly the second serve, second short serve. serves. He's going to go to that two wall Z type serve. Sean Lenning digs that ball out and slides it back down the wall. Nadi's very tentative with that first serve. Nine serving five. Good shot from Nadi, Dave. Let's see if Nadi can off that back foot five and drives the kill nine. with his left hand two inches high. See if Nadi can relax just enough here. Let's do something with that serve. That's a great serve right there from Nadi Alvarado, and he gets the point. That was an incredible serve going over the top of the ball to reverse that. That ball Six just a little bit down that side wall. Let's see if he does it again. He might go to the right side. Oof. Another double bounce. That would have been the second bounce that Sean Four. dug up there. Short ball called, though. Second serve. Nadi, Nadi has to get this into play. I like that he's taking chances though, Dave. Can't believe Nadi was unable to put that shot away, Dave. So close to the front wall, the great opportunity. Now here he is in the backcourt. That's very frustrating for the Alvarado camp. Sean Lenning should be seeing seven on the scoreboard here. Instead, he's serving at nine. Crowd feels the tension. Thought he had a little bit too much time to think about that left Nine, hand kill. He was moving six. so slowly, just didn't execute a shot. But Sean Lenning is giving Nadi a lot of opportunities, including back wall setups off of his serve. That's the second consecutive serve Nadi's put away with his right hand. Nadi Alvarado, right there in the middle of the court, has been potent today. Unfortunately, when he's had big setups in the front court with his left hand, he's been driving it down the middle of the court or checking it up on one of the sidewalls. If he had Andy Nett's left hand or Charlie Shank's left hand today, I think that this one might be over with. Those well, two double faults in this tiebreaker has not been helpful for Naughty either. 
Okay, that was a side out. Six serving nine. There were also a couple bad calls to start off this, this match. Naughty could be, you know, seven to eight or something like that at this point. A couple of those calls that we saw earlier. Second serve. Naughty, another short ball. Not as aggressive this time, and Sean Linning just stilettos that ball into the left corner. And that's the problem with serving these Z serves to these top elite four players. They find ways Nine to put those serves six. away, and Sean Lenning did just that. Well, he was looking for it. He stepped in, took that with his right hand. Short. Sean Lenning has to keep this serve off the back wall if he wants to Second serve. get himself closer to the finals here, and he does there. Here's a setup for Sean. Would have liked to see Naughty take that one off the back wall. And incredibly, Naughty does not put that ball away off the front wall, back wall. Sean Lenning in control. And look at that shot right there from Sean Lenning. Dive, re-kill. Let's look at the instant replay here at the Washington Athletic Club. Now Sean going up 10 to 6. Take a quick replay of that last yeah. shot. Timeout. Final timeout. One minute, Naughty. I was surprised to see Naughty actually pick that ball up. Naughty had to stay pinned on Sean's right there, but Naughty had a chance to end the rally. Frustrating for Naughty Alvarado as Sean Lenning diving in, making a beautiful shot. Naughty Alvarado hit that paddle shot just a little too, a little too high, Dave. I mean, it clipped the side wall and fooled Sean, but Sean had enough time to actually dive in and re-kill it. And now he's going to be serving to go to the finals here at the Washington Athletic Club. We've seen Nadia Alvarado have big leads at this facility. We've seen him actually come back from big deficits. Can he do it again? That ball actually just checks up enough. Sean Linning's able to dive in and get it. And now we're in a 60-second timeout as the players slowly get back onto the court here. Sean Linning is serving to take this one. And Ashley Moeller is down near the court, she's going to jump on and have a quick chat with Sean Lenning. Okay. Ten possible match point, serving six. Be it. Sean Lennon does it. Sean Lennon advances. A round of applause. Congratulations, Sean. Sean Lennon advances to the finals here in Seattle, Washington at the WPH Simple Green Race for Ace as we have Ashley Moeller now on the big stage with our, our winner, Sean Lennon. Let's go to Ashley. Ash? Sean, I know it's very difficult to come into a game after knocking somebody's glasses off and blood on the floor. How did you keep yourself composed to get the win? Uh, I apologized, and then I felt better about it. And then uh, I was, it was fine. And you have another rematch with Luis Moreno, which we've uh, seen many times this season. How do you plan on making the outcome differently? Uh, just try and fire myself up a little more. He's good friend of mine so it's kind of weird uh, getting intense with him but I'm gonna do my darndest all right <laughs> we look forward to your finals tonight thank you they love Sean Lenning here in Seattle Washington and he loves him back and the crowd sticks around to hear what he has to say about uh, Luis Moreno and that final is going to be here tonight at 8 o'clock it's pretty much what most of the insiders expected to see another Sean Lenning Luis Moreno final. We've seen that multiple times uh, throughout this, uh, this year so far, and we've actually seen it even before the Race for Eight uh, tour as well. We have another match coming up right around the corner at 4 o'clock. It's 4.15. The original schedule is for Andy Nett versus Luis Cordova. Those two will be on the court next as they warm up right now here on the show court for the seventh place finals. More action coming up right around the corner for Dave Fink, Linda Manning, Omar Lemus, Ben Garad, as well as Lolita De Vincent and Chip Morales, as, uh, as well as John Bike. My name is Dave Vincent. We'll be back. More action coming up right around the corner. Stick with us at RaceForEight.com. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Zion, extreme science for your active lifestyle.